Hello! In this video, I'm showing you how to wire up zone valves on your central heating system and replace your old programmer or programmers with Hive's new thermostat mini, where you can then control your central heating from your smartphone with Hive's active heating. So I'm going to be adding a new Hive receiver and zone valve to an existing system, and I'll show you all the wiring connections needed to complete that. I'll then go through my two wiring diagrams. The first diagram is where we have a standard programmer and room thermostat and zone valves. The second diagram is then we'll replace the programmer and the room thermostat with a new Hive active heating. Now this video will help you for all your systems, whether you've got a combination boiler or a traditional system with that large hot water tank, it should cover everything you should need to know. What it doesn't cover is the wiring for a mid position valve. That's a valve like this. So if you've got this type of valve, then the wiring is different. And of course I made a separate video about doing that. And you'll find it in the cards above now or down in the description. In the description, you'll find lots of other help videos that I've made, like how to get a radiator hot that's not working, how to replace a radiator valve, balancing your radiators and how to make your system as efficient as possible. Right, now let's get on with worrying in this new zone valve and receiver unit. Now I've made this demonstration panel up to show you how the hive receivers and thermostats and hub are wired up and also how to pair additional thermostats and of course wiring in the additional zones and zone valves. And of course, do check in the description below to see those other videos. So on this panel, I'm going to show you how the zone valve and the receiving it are wired together and wired into the rest of the system controls. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is to turn the power off. So we can see we've got a green light on the receiving it. So we know the power is on. So I'm going to switch off the switch fuse spur and remove the fuse. So now I'm ready to wire in the new Hive receiver unit. Just before I do that, it's always recommended to check that the system is definitely dead with a fault tester like this. And there we go, my system is definitely dead. Now this is the wiring that you would typically find on any combination boiler. So we have a live neutral and an earth coming into the boiler. This supplies power to the boiler and also power to the Hive receiver unit. Let's take a quick look at the wiring inside our existing Hive receiver unit. So I'll undo the two screws and then I can lift off the receiver unit. Now inside here we have our live neutral and our earth. And then we've got our two switch wires on terminals one and three. Now the switch wires do depend on how your boiler is wired up, but I've got the black wire here and that's just on a link to the live. So we've got a live coming across and then that supplies power down the black wire. That goes up into the receiver unit. It goes through the switch on the receiver unit where it then becomes our switch live wire, which is a gray one, which then comes back and goes onto the switch live inside the boiler. Now this is wired up exactly the same as it would be on any combination boiler. You'll have a live neutral and an earth, but the naming and the positioning of the switch wires are going to be slightly different on every boiler. If you want to know more about wiring it into a combination boiler, then of course, check out my other video, which is how to install the hive into a combination boiler. So let's take a look at the wiring for the zone valve and the new hive receiver. Now here I have a piece of five core flex coming out to the wiring center. And this is going to be wired into our controls for our boiler. So let's take a look inside this wiring center and see how it's all wired in. And of course, we've also got our little hive receiver over here. So let's just take that off and see how that's wired in. So a hive receiver is wired in exactly the same as the other receiver. We've got a live neutral on earth and we've got our two switch wires here, black on power coming in and gray with switch live coming out. Now let's take a look at the wiring inside our wiring center. Now the wire coming out, that is exactly the same as the other wire. So we've got live and neutral and our earth. And then we have our two switch wires on gray and black. Now I've used this wiring center to make it nice and clear where all the wires go. So let's just follow this wire coming in. So we have a live neutral and an earth and those are wired in exactly as you would expect. So we've got a live wire here and that's supplying live to power the receiving it down the five core flex there. 
Then, of course, we have our neutral and our earth wires. You can see those coming in there. And obviously, a neutral then goes to neutral on the receiving it. And of course, we've also got a neutral wire and an earth wire on our zone valve. So, so far, it's pretty straightforward. Now, the switch wires are wired in differently. So, we've still got our black wire coming in, which is supplying power to the switch. Now, I could also have taken that power from the brown live wire. So we've got this black wire which is supplying 230 volts to our switch connection on the receiver unit. The black wire is also connected to the orange wire which is supplying power to the switch inside the zone valve. Now let's take a look at that switch wire because that is wired in differently. So we have our grey wire here. That's our switch live coming out of the receiving unit and it comes back around here and then it connects onto the brown wire inside the zone valve. Now this brown wire is connected to the motor inside the zone valve. So let's take a look inside the zone valve and I can show you what's inside here. So you've got a better understanding of what's going on. So we've got a motor here, that silver thing. And when the motor is given power, it opens up the zone valve, which pushes this little paddle across. And then when the motor is fully opened, it presses on this little micro switch here where we got that orange wire connected onto. So when the micro switch is pressed, it makes a connection with the gray wire. So then we have power coming back at the gray wire that's connected onto the gray wire, which is then the switch live, which is going back to our boiler or other system controls. Now there is also a white wire here, but that one's not being used. That will have power on it when the switch inside the zone valve is in the off position. But we don't need to connect that one up. Now the reason why zone valves are wired up in this way is to make sure that the zone valve is fully open before it turns the boiler on. That way, if there was a fault with the zone valve and the motor wasn't working, which does happen, the boiler would not come on because the micro switch inside the zone valve has not been pressed. Now, I have seen zone valves wired up incorrectly and the switch has been ignored. The problem with ignoring the switch is the boiler is going to come on whether the zone valve is open or not. And then if the zone valve has failed to open for any reason, your boiler is still going to come on and then your boiler is going to overheat because there's no zone valves open, which obviously is very bad for your boiler. Just a quick tip for you, the receiver units and the thermostats, they both look exactly the same. So you might want to consider just putting a label on them so you know which ones are which, so you don't accidentally muddle them up because that can make things really confusing. So an easier place to wire it in would be into the existing Hive thermostat, or I could wire it into the combination boiler or into some other system controls I may have. So now I've wired in my new zone into the existing combination boiler, and that's pretty straightforward. We just link up the live to the live, the neutral to the neutral, earth to earth. Obviously we must have an earth because we have those other system controls, although the Hive doesn't actually need an earth because it's double insulated. Now on this method, I've then wired up the two switch wires exactly the same as they are on the existing Hive receiver unit. Now wiring it in like this means that when the new thermostat turns on and starts calling for heat, it's gonna start heating that new zone, but it's also gonna start heating the original system, overriding the original thermostat, because there's no zone valve on the original system. Now, when the original thermostat turns on, it's gonna start heating the original part of the house as usual. And the new zoned area will not start heating up unless the new thermostat is calling for heat. I'm really hoping that all makes sense to you. So now I've finished refitting all the covers, I'm ready to refit the fuse and pair in the new hive controls. Now I'm not gonna go into pairing on this video. I made a separate video where I show you two different ways to pair in the new Hive controls. So let's take a look at our wiring diagram for our dual channel programmer and our single channel programmer before we go fit in the Hive receivers. 
So let's just quickly run through the components. So over here we have our mains, that's the power coming into the system. Then we have a room thermostat just here. Then we have a single channel programmer just here. Then we've got another room thermostat. Then we've got a dual channel programmer, control the hot water, as it says there, HW and heating. And over here we've got a pump and a boiler. And then we've got our zone valve for our hot water. We've got a cylinder thermostat, which will be on our hot water tank. And then we've got heating zone number one, and we've got heating zone number two. Now I've just named these zone valves as one, two, and three, but this would be our first heating zone, and this would be our second heating zone. Right, so now let's just run through the wiring so we can see what the wiring is doing. So this is pretty straightforward again. We have a live coming in here, and it goes into our wiring center just here. Now that terminal comes across onto the orange as well. But let's just follow this brown through here. Now I haven't joined up all the browns because normally you take this brown wire here and bring it into the terminal block as well. And then the brown over here that go into the terminal block. But to make the picture easy to see, I've left all the browns in just this one long line here. So we got the live going into our single channel programmer and then we've got a live going into our dual channel programmer. And then we've also got a live on the boiler. Not every boiler is going to have that, but on all modern boilers, you will have a permanent live on the boiler. And then if we follow the live down here, which I've now covered orange, it then goes onto the switch on the zone valve. And again, you can follow that orange wire along. That goes onto the switch in this zone valve and also on the hot water that comes along and goes into the switch here. So that's all our lives. Obviously, everything is earth. You can see the earth wire coming in here. And we've got an earth on every component. Now, not every component needs an earth or has an earth, but remember, you should always have an earth wire to protect the flex in case the flex became damaged. Okay, and then we have the neutral. Neutral is pretty straightforward as well. Obviously, neutral comes along, it goes into our programmer. Sometimes you'll have a neutral on the thermostat you can see on this wiring here we've got a neutral on the thermostat but on this thermostat here there's no neutral and then we've got the neutral comes along into the programmer then we've got a neutral on our pump a neutral on our boiler and of course we've got the neutral coming off all the motors which are in the zone valves so that's our live neutral and earth covered now let's just follow the switching through and see what it does so we've got a programmer here we've got the live coming in there it then comes across when the programmer turns on the hot water, the power will then come down here into our cylinder thermostat. When the cylinder thermostat calls for heat, when the switch makes there, that will then put power across. The power goes into the motor. The motor winds open, open the valve. When the valve gets fully open, the switch will come across, giving then power onto the gray wire. The gray wire is then powered up and that comes back and it goes into our boiler on the switch live on the boiler and they do all the same on all of the other zone valves as well you can see the gray come along like that and then our central heating is exactly the same we got a central heating wire here comes off the programmer so that's live coming down there when it's switched on and i've just terminated in the terminal block and then you have another wire going back to the common on the room thermostat when the room thermostat then calls for heat the switch is then made and then we get power coming down and it goes into the zone valve for your central heating and exactly the same happens again the motor open switch comes across power to the boiler and then we've got our last programmer doing exactly the same you got the live coming in and then we've got the switch wire here coming down on the pink and it goes across into the room thermostat through the switch and then back down onto the motor in zone valve number three and that's it pretty straightforward now the white wire is not being used that's just in the off position so that's just terminated over here and some zone valves won't have this white wire and some zone valves don't even have a earth wire either so just be aware of that now when it comes to wiring in our new hive system the wiring is pretty much the same okay so we just remember all these wires always take a photo of your wires first of all you want to keep these wires as they are if you're using a dual channel but what we will be doing is removing the room thermostat so the room thermostat would then be removed 
And the same for this single channel. Again, remember where the wires are or we'll take a photo of them and then remove the room thermostat again because we won't be needing that. And then those wires would then be terminated or removed in a safe way. But then we would then be linking up this wire here onto the wire there instead. So basically we just remove this little link into here and we just take the wire which is there and put it straight into here. And I'll show you that on the next diagram. Just before I get on with that next one with diagram, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for nearly 30 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video at all useful, then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up or the subscribe. You can ring on the bell if you want to receive a notification. And of course, you can share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's bought me a cup of coffee and left me a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Okay, so let's take a look at this wiring diagram and see how all the components for the hive system are wired in. So let's just go through the components first of all. And then this wiring will also cover you if you have a traditional system where you have that large hot water tank. Because just here I have a dual receiver where we have hot water and our central heating all controlled from the one receiver. And then I've got additional zones here that would be wired in like it was in a combination boiler or if you are adding additional zones to your traditional system. So let's just take a quick look at the components. Now over here we have our dual receiver for our traditional system with our hot water and our central heating. Now over here we have our single channel hive receiver and then over here we have a second single channel receiver and these two are just wired up slightly different. I'll explain that in just a moment. And then down here we have our zone valves. So that's our hot water zone valve as it says just there. Then we got our first heating zone just here. Then we got our second heating zone and we got our third heating zone. But obviously because we, these are all zone valves, I've just named it as zone valve one, zone valve two, zone valve three and zone valve four. And then also we have our boiler. Now this could be a combination boiler or it could be a boiler on our traditional system. And we have our pump just here to pump the water around us heating system now you may have an external pump and it doesn't really matter what system you have but a combination boiler typically it would be inside the boiler but even on a combination boiler you may have an external pump where you've got part of a system which just needs a bit of a boost with a pump and obviously also with a traditional system you'll most likely have a pump outside but if you've got a system boiler on your traditional system the pump will be inside the boiler and then also on your traditional system, you got a, a cylinder thermostat. This is a thermostat which goes onto the hot water tank and make sure that the hot water stays the correct temperature. So I hope all these components make sense. So let's just follow the wiring through. So like I said, this is our switch fuse spur and we got our live neutral and our earth. Now let's just follow this live wire in. So we've got live coming in here. It goes along here and then it comes into our wiring center. Now you can see I've then linked up all the lives on this single brand wire here. Now the reason that I've done that is because if I bring the live back into the wiring center, obviously that is the way you would wire it in. I then have 10 wires coming back into the wiring center, which would make this drawing look really quite confusing. So that's why I've linked all the brown wires up on this single line here. And if you follow this through, so with this a terminal block here, the live comes across and the live then goes into all my zone valves. Now here I've drawn it as orange because the Drayton zone valves and the Honeywell zone valves, this connection here is orange on the switch, but different zone valves may use different colors. So always check with the manufacturer first to see what colors they are. You can see I've got four live connections onto these zone valves and they all come back on the orange wire and are connected directly onto the live coming in. So that would then make 10 connections into here. Now that's exactly the same for the neutral. So if you follow the neutral wire coming in, it comes along here, it goes into the wiring center. You can see blue for neutral, and then goes onto the riser receiving units like this. And it also goes into the pump and it also goes into our boiler if we follow that back. And then we got the neutral on all the zone valves as well joined onto the motor. So that would also give us 10 connections on neutral. And then we got earth here, which obviously earth is coming in on the green. 
And although the receiver units don't actually need an earth, you should always have an earth in there to protect the wires in case there was ever a fault within the wiring. So if I follow this earth through, they're all connected again, exactly the same. We've got an earth on our pump, we've got an earth on the boiler, and we've got our earth on all the zone valves. Again, that does depend on the manufacturer. Some zone valves don't have an earth. And of course, I've also got an earth on my cylinder thermostat. Again, some thermostats don't have an earth, but some will. And that would then give me 11 connections onto my terminal block. So that then would give me 31 wires coming into the wiring center. So you can see this wiring center is gonna get really busy. So let's just follow this live wire through. We've got live coming along here. Now, if we take this as being the first receiver unit, we can see the live comes up and it goes on to our first receiver unit just here as a live connection. On the second receiver, I've wired it up slightly differently just to demonstrate the two different ways you can wire up a single receiver. So the live comes in and then it comes across and we make a link and we link it onto terminal one. So that then makes terminal one live. But if we look at receiver two, we can also do it this way. Now, this is the way I did it earlier on in the video, but instead of this wire being brown, it was black. And the only reason I do that is because I was using a five core flex and that uses all five wires. So obviously we've got a live coming in, we've got our neutral wire, and then we have our black wire, which would be power coming in. And you see it just connects straight onto the live terminal. So live coming in and then when the switch is made inside the receiver unit, we then got power coming out here on the light brown. So now let's follow those switch wires through. So let's look at our dual channel receiver first of all. So now we've got our live and neutral coming in. When the app says turn the heating on or the hot water on, a switch is made inside the receiving unit and we get power coming out on either the hot water terminal or the heating terminal. So let's just follow the hot water through first of all, where we have that traditional system. So we've got a light brown wire coming here. Again, this could be any color. It comes into our terminal block and then the wire comes down. It comes into our cylinder thermostat and then it then comes out on the other side on the cylinder thermostat here. So when the cylinder thermostat calls for heat, the switch comes across and it goes onto this terminal here, making a connection. And then we have power coming down here. The power then goes into the motor. The motor then winds the valve open. When the motor fully opens, it then presses on the switch. The switch then comes across. So we have live on the switch coming in. The switch makes and then we have live then coming down the gray wire. So this is gray, it comes down here and you can then see the gray is then connected into a terminal block. And then on the other side of the terminal block, we then got a gray wire coming out, which then goes down to our switch live on our boiler. So that's gonna turn the boiler on. Now, if you just follow the heating through here, so when we turn our heating on, on this dual receiver, we then got power coming down here. It comes down here into the wiring center, comes across on the terminal block. And then obviously again, it supplies power to the motor. The motor then opens up when it gets fully open. It does exactly the same again. The switch connection is then made. It takes it from the white wire onto the gray wire. And then again, we then get power coming down the gray wire, supplying power to the switch live on the boiler. And of course, the other two receivers are wired in exactly the same. We've got a single channel receiver here. When our app says bring on heating in our zone three, it then obviously the switch is then made. And then we get power coming down here. It comes across the terminal block, it comes across here, down into the motor. The motor does exactly the same thing, opens up. And again, we have power coming out on the gray, which is then gonna go back to the switch live. And then we've got exactly the same on our fourth zone here. We have the live coming in. It comes across on the switch. The app calls for heating on our fourth zone. We then have power coming down and it goes through the wire down there and into the motor. The motor opens up. And again, we then have power coming down the gray. Now on these zone valves, I was showing there is a white wire, which is used when the switch is in the off position. Obviously none of these wires are being used. So they can all just terminate inside the wiring center. Now do beware, this is important. The white wire will have 230 volts on it when the zone valve is in the off position. So make sure that that wire is actually terminated properly. Don't just leave it flapping around. 
And again, some zone valves won't even have this wire and they may not even have an earth wire. So like I said a bit earlier, our wiring center is gonna get really busy. On this wiring center here, if all the wires were joined up, we'd be looking at about 50 wires going into that wiring center. So that's an awful lot of wires. Even if you're just using a dual channel receiver, you'll still be looking at about 25 wires all being joined together inside the wiring center. And of course, you may not have just one wiring center, you might have a couple of them. And if you get any of the wires muddled up, it will completely mess the whole system up and you could even damage components. So if you're not sure, then always call a gas registered engineer to come and do the work for you. If you manage to get it completely wrong and blow the circuit board on your boiler, that circuit board could cost you in the region of £200 just for the circuit board. But the wiring itself is pretty straightforward. If you just take one receiver unit on its own, we just got live coming in, it goes into receiver, it goes through the switch, out the other side and into our zone valve. So basically on this type of system where you have zone valves, you're just duplicating all the connections on each one. And the switch wires going onto the motors are kind of the only wires which are then kept separate. Everything else is pretty much linked together. Right, that's about it then. So I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to know more about wiring options or stand options for the Hive, you can click on that link just there. If you want to know about pairing the Hive, click on that link just there. And a cup of coffee in my toolbox fund is always really appreciated. And as usual, click on subscribe, ring on the bell, share me with your friends, give me a thumbs up. Bye for now. See you next time.